So, okay, before we go on to the strokes, uh, the most important thing when it comes to calligraphy is, of course, the way you hold your pen. So a lot of questions that I get from my students uh, from our classes is that the way that you're holding your pen really affects uh, how, how the words uh, come out, you know, how, how thick the stroke is and how thin the stroke is. So normally for uh, calligraphy pens, right, I would recommend to hold it uh, slightly slanted to the uh, paper that you're using. So it's around 45 degrees angle. And yeah, because if you're writing, if you're holding your pen, like how you normally would hold your uh, normal pencil or pen, it will be very up straight and you can't really um, create the thickness of the stroke. All right. So okay, now that we have that out of the way, um, I hope everyone is following so far. So may I have a show of hands of how many of you guys are using uh, the iPad? uh and the procreate app is anyone using the ipad or most of you guys are just using a uh, pen and pencil with the a4 paper so if you're using the ipad you can just type ipad or one in the chat you know if ipad is too long you can type one okay i see that also people are showing their pens you're using procreate okay great so for procreate users i would also say that um it's, it might be a bit difficult for you to get a hang of the pressure sensitivity, but no worries, you can play along with it and practice as you go. Okay, so right, now that we have that out of the way, we will start with the strokes. So when it comes to calligraphy, uh, the very basic rule that everyone should know is downstroke should be a thick stroke and then upstroke will be a very thin stroke. Okay, so why, why is it uh, this way? Because, right, when you're writing a downstroke, you're actually applying pressure. So you're applying pressure and that is why you can create a very thick stroke. So when you're, write, when you're writing the upstroke, it will be a very minimal pressure type of stroke. So it will be a very light stroke. And then you will just uh, draw the upstroke like this. Okay. So again, if you're using the iPad, you can see that there is a calligraphy tab and you can choose any pens from there. So yeah, I'll just demonstrate uh, once. So for the downstroke, you apply pressure and then it will be a very thick stroke. So for the upstroke, it will be a very thin stroke instead. Okay, so this is a very basic rule that everyone should follow for calligraphy. And it also applies when it comes to uh, writing any type of letters, okay? Right, so for the worksheets, I believe that uh, everyone can see this page, which is the letters formation. So for letters, right, you can see that all the letters from A to Z, they are formed from the basic strokes, which is, for example, you can see that this is a mixture of both uh, this type of stroke and then a compound curve like this, and then you get the letter H. So when it comes to letters, try to uh, do it slowly and then uh, take a break in between so that you can um, create the thick and thin stroke, right? Okay, so firstly, I'll demonstrate how um, you would write this stroke. So for this, right, you will start from the left. You will slowly draw the thin, oh, sorry. So you will slowly draw the thin stroke up curve, and then you will stop in between, and then you can apply pressure and create a down stroke like this, okay? So I hope everyone is following. All right. So the next one would be the compound curve. And you will start with a very, very thin stroke. You will write a very thin stroke up, slightly curve it. And then you will draw a thicker stroke down. And then you will perform another thin stroke like this. So you can just follow the guide. And uh, according to the thickness and thinness, you would apply pressure accordingly. Okay. So is everyone doing great so far? Can I get a thumbs up if you're doing great? I hope everyone is following. Okay, right. I see some thumbs up, which is great. If you guys think that I'm going too fast, feel free to stop me in between and tell me, hey, you're doing it too fast. I can't really follow. Okay, so it's an interactive session. So feel free to speak up and I'll chat. I'll check the chat uh, from time to time. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop in the chat as well. Okay, now that, you, now that we have these uh, two strokes out of the way, the two basic strokes, we will then combine them together to form the letter H. Okay, 
again, we'll start with the, um, this is what we call the ascending loop. So we'll start with a very thin stroke, just slightly curve it upwards. And then write a very thick stroke down. And lastly, the compound curve. Okay. Right. So if you want to show your letter H uh, on the screen and let me comment on it, feel free to do so as well. If not, uh, we'll move on to the letter A. Okay. Right. So for the letter A, we'll start with, a, with an oval and then a downstroke with a little tail curve upwards. Okay. So for the oval, I like to start from the very top and the middle here. So you can draw a very thick stroke down, slightly curve it, and then a very thin stroke up, like this, okay? And then we'll do the uh, thick down stroke, okay? So just very apply some pressure onto the down stroke, and then slightly curve it upwards. So you'll get something like this. And now that we have done the basic strokes for this uh, letter, we'll put them together to form the letter A. Okay, again, an oval, and then a down stroke with a tail. So you can see that all the letters are formed from very, very basic strokes. And once you have your basic strokes uh, mastered and you have got them uh, consistent, when you put the letters together, it will be a very consistent uh, looking type of letters okay right so far do we have any questions from uh anyone so if you're using a pen and pencil i would there's another way for you to uh write it as well so let me just demonstrate because when you're using a pencil you can't really uh have the thickness right so what do you do so we can create fake calligraphy with it so what what is fake calligraphy you may ask so Thick calligraphy would look something like this. So let, let's take the letter A for example. This is how you would write the normal letter A, right? And if you're using a pencil or pen, you can create another thick stroke, I mean, another line here and another line over here where the thick strokes are formed. And then you just color in. And this is how you create a thick calligraphy with a normal pencil and pen without brush pens. I hope this helps. Maybe I'll give another example to show you guys a um, easier way. So let's say for the letter L. In calligraphy, we will do it like this, right? So if you're using a pencil or pen, you can write it like this. And then draw another stroke. And just color in the spaces in between. Like this. See? Okay. It's pretty simple and anyone can do it with a simple pen and pencil. All right. Okay, now we'll move on to the uh, wishes right now, which is putting all the letters together and forming uh, the greetings and wishes that we are all here to learn. All right, so we'll be demonstrating three, three uh, type of wishes or greetings over here. So you can see that if you if you print it out, you can actually see the guided strokes as in how you should go with it. So you should firstly, uh, you can just follow along the arrows and draw the strokes. Okay. Right. Now we'll just start with connecting the letters. Now the first one we would do would be happy birthday and I believe everyone has friends or families whose birthdays are coming up and this would be a great time for you to learn um, how to write it in calligraphy if you want to impress your friends and family. Okay, right. So for the, let, uh, for the letters happy, we will start with what we learned just now which is the ascending loop. The ascending loop and then we'll do the compound curve like this okay so you can see that when it comes to uh, creating words and phrases right they are all connected but you do not have to do it all in one go you can just pause in between and then continue on with the next letters okay so 
try to take your time and be patient when it comes to writing calligraphy because if you're doing it too fast uh, you can't really create the thick and thin strokes which is what uh, calligraphy is all about all right so once you have your letter h down you would uh, continue on with the letter a and when it comes to writing the next letters make sure that uh, it touches the the stroke from the previous letter to make them connected okay and for the p it will be a down stroke like this and then a stroke like this so just to give you guys a very zoom in version the p would look something like this okay right and then you just do it again a down stroke and a curve or over like this all right so so far anyone has any uh questions with this or is it too quick i hope everyone can just uh follow along if you have any questions again feel free to voice it out all right and lastly for the letter y we would do a um under curve and then a down stroke and just draw a little loop over here okay right so maybe we'll just take a few questions from the floor to see if anyone has any questions so those who are having their cameras on maybe uh maybe if you want to show your progress so far feel free to do so so that everyone can take a look at your beautiful artwork anyone want to show their uh you know progress so far okay we have someone showing their work which is very nice not bad if you're using a normal a pen okay we have one from lisa and christine okay nice that's very that's a very good attempt i can see the thickness the thick and thin stroke uh, difference in them and you're doing very great okay right okay we have another one here So I hope everyone can see it as well because I've put it as spotlight so you can see that uh, how they are doing theirs and then you can compare it with yours and see how you improve from there. Okay, from the H, okay, for Sam's, for Sam's uh, artwork, I would suggest that the H, uh, maybe you can add a little connection to the A, right? So that it can connect, but overall it's a very good attempt, very nice curve. All right, great, great. I'm glad that everyone is following so far. And now we'll move on to the next word from here, which is birthday, okay? So for this one, we'll start off with the B. And for the B, we'll start with a stroke like this. So you'll we'll do a curve upwards and then a down stroke, which is the same one for letter H. And then we'll do an, an over here and connect it to the next letter. Okay. And then we'll do a downstroke from the I. And then for the R, we will do it uh, a small type of comma and then a downstroke with a tail. Okay. And for the T as well, you just do a downstroke and curve it upwards. And next, you will want to draw the hand. For the letter t right but you can actually connect it to the letter h so you can just do a wave like this and then a down stroke all right so this is a this is a type of connection that you can make between the letter t and h and then for the h again we have done this before it will be a compound curve and next would be the letter d where you will do an oval and a down stroke like this and you just follow along uh, for the A and Y. For the A, you will do a curve, uh, sorry, an oval like this and a downstroke. And for the Y, you will do a downstroke and then a downward stroke with a curve. Okay. Right. I hope this is not too complicated or difficult for everyone. If you think it's too quick, feel free to stop me as well. And if you want me to, uh, do it again or demonstrate any letters you can uh, feel free to ask me also all right 
Now we have two guided uh guided words here, right? You can do this at home after the session by yourself because we still have two other phrases that we want to cover and I believe there's not enough time for those. So we'll just quickly move on to the next one, which is the Halloween one. And since Halloween is coming up, besides giving out candies, you can also give out cards as well, especially cards with your calligraphy handwriting that you will learn right now. All right. Okay. So how's everyone doing? Do you guys think it's too difficult? If, you're, if you think it's too difficult, you can just maybe give the number two in the chat. Or if you think it's like, this is too easy, you can write a one. So those who think it's too hard, you can type in the number two. And if you think it's very easy, you can type in the letter one, okay? Oh, wow. Okay, that's great. Kyla is doing pretty good. Christine is showing her work though. I think she did a pretty good job tracing it. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Wait, let me put it as spotlight for everyone to see. Oh, that's very nice actually, yeah. That is very, very well done. Yeah, that is very nice, honestly. Yeah. Nice, nice. Really good attempt. So, Christine, may I know what pen are you using? Oh, okay. It's a... Oh, right. Okay, this is a very good pen. Nice, nice. The art line decor. Right. Okay, good. Thanks for showing your work, Christine. That's very nice. Okay, anyone else want to show their work? You know, we can just take a look. If no, we'll quickly move on. Okay, now, for the next one would be Halloween. And for those who are celebrating, this will be a great opportunity to learn how to write it. Okay, again, since we have uh, wrote the letter happy, right? I will just quickly um, go through. Okay, now again, for the letter H, before we would do it uh, this way, right? We will curve it upwards. Maybe now we'll do it another way, another type of wave. Okay, so it will be something like this. Just do an inverse type of S, I guess. And then the downstroke. And then the compound curve. And I'll just quickly go through and you guys can do it uh, in your own pace or just follow along because we have went through this and then we'll focus more on the next one, which is Halloween, right? Okay. So this is what you will get when you're done. And for the Halloween, again, we'll do the letter H, which we have learned and the letter A. So when it comes to connecting letters, right? Make sure that you're creating a long enough tail to have the next letter connect to it. Else you can just, uh, if you are missing the connection, you can just draw the extra tail from there. Okay. And again, the L and then the O. And for the W, this uh, might or might not be challenging for you, depending uh, on your brush pen or on your familiarity. Okay. So for the W, it will be like this. And then a tiny curve and the letter E. And N. Okay. So if it makes it easier, you can also uh, draw a line when you're writing the letters so that it all falls under the same level. But if you're going for another type of style, you can have it uh, as the bouncing effect where each letter has different heights. So that would be another type of style that you can try and you can play along with it. Okay. So this would be how you would write the Halloween and you can just follow along the guided lines and then uh, once you have mastered how to draw it or how to write it, you can do it on a blank piece of paper on your own. Okay? Sorry, a little bit just to your screen is shining because maybe the light is oh, just yeah. uh, goes so to sorry. your screen. Yeah. Okay. So sorry. I, yeah, it's the reflection from the light. Maybe I'll position it uh, this way where it will be better, I hope. Okay, good, good. Thank you. Right, okay. So sorry for the light. <laughs> okay. So anyone has any difficulty with any of the letters or connections? Anyone want to ask any questions for now? If it's all good, I'll move on. 
Okay. We'll move on to you the guys can actually uh, showcase your artwork or your attempts so that you can actually give live feedback at the moment because this um this session is actually pretty short and then after which we will move on to the Q&A session yeah mm. yeah so anyone want to show their screen let me just take a look if anyone's okay okay right let's see Hylas you want to show your work just show it to the screen would do all right oh that's very good yeah that's a very good attempt so are you using a pen or a brush pen so brush pen right right that's very good so a brush pen would definitely work better okay now let's see if anyone okay sam's artwork not bad, not bad. That's a very good attempt. Maybe the letter, the, the two E's in between for Halloween, you can maybe space it out a little. Otherwise, that's a very good attempt on the thick and thin lines. So are you using the uh, brush pen or pencil? Oh, okay. I think that's a... Oh, all right. I think it's a normal pen. Okay. So for that, I believe that you're just creating the thicker stroke with another line, right? Yeah. Okay. A marker. All right. Yes. A marker would work as well. Okay. Right. So Christine has requested. Like... Yeah, right. Right. Uh, o one more time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right. For the letter O, it would be. Okay. Right. So the letter O would look something like this. And how we would write it is we'll have, we start from the middle over here, from the thick stroke. We just write a curve and then a thin stroke all the way. And you just, just uh, curve it this way. All right. So it will be a combination of this and then it will be like this. So when you put them together, you will form this letter O over here. Okay, I'll just show one more time. So it takes stroke curve curving down and then a thin stroke like this. Okay. Okay, Christine, so far so good. All right. Okay. Now, we'll move on to the last phrase that we have here, which is uh, everyone's favorite season, I believe. At least for me, it's one of my favorite season or festive season of the year, which is Christmas. Okay, so if you're gifting uh, presents or gifts to someone uh, this year, you can add on a card with this modern calligraphy writing, wishing them Merry Christmas. Okay, right. For the letter M, we would start with a downstroke, a thick downstroke, and then an overturn where you would draw a thin, a thin curve like this upwards, and then a thicker stroke down, and then you would do the same again, which is like this. And then make sure that you're creating another kill to connect the next letter. Okay? And for the E, it would just be a thin stroke like this, and then you can create a thicker stroke down. And then just draw a line that is long enough to create the letter R. And then again, a thick stroke downwards and then another thick stroke. And you will just do it again. Like this. Okay. And for the Y, it will be the same and under curve. And then it takes stroke down and then just create a thin loop like this. Okay. All right. So someone asked me uh, what type of software or apps I think uh, am I using. So this is actually the Procreate app, which is available on all iOS devices. So if you're using an iPad or iPhone, this, uh, this is available from the App Store. Okay. So maybe I'll type the app down. Is this free? Is this free site? Free free software? 
Uh, this app is actually cost. It costs like I think around sixteen US dollar, I believe, right? From oh, okay. Rebecca. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It, yeah, it's not a subscription, so it's a one-time payment. I think it's worth it if you're going to use it in the long run because other than just like uh, for calligraphy, you can actually draw, use it to draw, uh, I don't know, illustration and other stuff as well. Yes, yes. It's a very yeah, uh, powerful app, honestly, because you can see that from the brush pen that they have, right? They have a wide range of selection that you can play with. So they have like over 100 brush pens that you can experiment with. And the best part about this app is that they have specific uh, brush pens for calligraphy. You can see over here that they have a lot. So yeah, you can try and uh, download the app and purchase it if you want to and play around with it. Okay. So do, and then also at the same time, do we need to buy a pencil, like a special, like a digital pen for writing on this uh, software or just a regular pencil like uh for the brush pens right they actually come with the app no no, no you are you are using now white pencil now you are using oh, oh is this, right. pen is this yeah yeah, yeah. what is yeah. it it's the apple pencil that you can buy together with the ipad mm. so oh okay yeah. okay yeah. Oh, okay i got it thank you yeah. thank you yeah, so uh, you can, there are actually a few types of pens that you can use for, uh, you know, the digital software. Uh, some you can actually purchase it off from um, Shopee or e-commerce store. But those are, you know, slightly different because for Apple Pencil, you can actually, uh, they can actually detect the pressure when you apply on the surface of the your iPad or whatever, uh, you know, devices that you're using. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you buy um, another type of pen from uh, some other e-commerce store, they might not have the pressure sensitivity to uh, create the thick stroke and the thin stroke. So need to be <laughs> careful. Yeah, Leong mentioned that uh, he got his pen from China and it doesn't have the pressure sensitivity, which is uh, true because I got another pen from China as well and it doesn't have the pressure sensitivity, right? So, yeah, yeah you have definitely the Apple Pencil costs more mm. than the ones that you bought off from uh, Shopee or whichever e-commerce store. Yes. yes, true, true. So other than the strokes available on Procreate, right, those are just like default um, type of strokes available. Of course, down the road, we are also going to have our own strokes that we think is best for uh, calligraphy. So, yeah, you can check it out. Uh, our site or even follow us on Instagram for more updates in the future. Yeah, because the pen that I'm using, the brush pen that I'm using right now, I actually adjusted the settings to my own liking so that I can create the uh, calligraphy type of writing that I want to, right? So maybe in the future, we'll have different type of pens for you guys to try. Okay, right. So does anyone have any else, any more questions before we move on? If no, we'll finish off with the Christmas over here. Okay. So for the letter, I mean, for the uh, phrase Christmas, you will start off with the C and the C is pretty simple. You can just uh, create a curve like this. All right. It's just a thin stroke and then thick and then another thin stroke. Okay. So next will be the letter H, which we have done. And then the R. And the I. And then the S, you will do a very thin stroke first. And then draw a very thick curvy stroke. And then have a thin stroke up. Okay. And for the letter T, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a thick stroke down. And for the uh, arms, for the arm for the letter T, it would just be a very wavy line, very wavy thin line. Okay. And for the M, it will be like this. And then another thin stroke up and it takes stroke down and then you will just repeat it. Okay. And for the letter A, it's just an oval. And a thick stroke down with the tail to connect the letter S. And you will do the S again, which is like 
it's just like a curve like this the wavy curve okay right so all good if you're doing great you can just give a thumbs up if you want me to repeat any could you show me the could you show me the whole and uh, just do a uh, word merry christmas okay, sorry. okay sure so sorry okay oh sorry maybe i'll just put this way okay so this this uh worksheets that i'm using they are all available to download and i believe i've put it in the chat or if you want me to share it again we'll do so again so that you can download as many times as you want and you can practice uh, as many times as you want until you get it perfect and you can write it on the Christmas card that you're going to give it to someone else. Or you can just simply take a picture and trace it. Uh. Right? Okay. So if no one has any questions or does anyone want to show their work? That would be great. Okay, right. So now that we have done with all the phrases for today, we'll move on to maybe some common mistakes that um, beginners might have. Oh wait, I think Sam is showing their work. Okay, so everyone can see. Right. Yep. Again, that is very nice. So if you do not want to do it in calligraphy with the thick and thin stroke, you can also copy the uh, phrases using normal pen and pencil and you'll be just like a normal mono line type of calligraphy. Okay, so yeah, I, it's a very great attempt for someone who's using a marker because I don't think uh, it's pretty easy to use a marker for calligraphy, but it's definitely possible. Great, great. Yep. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. All right, we'll, maybe we'll move on to the common mistakes that beginners might have. And okay, so I hope everyone can see uh, Rebecca's screen, the screen that she's sharing. Okay, so for common mistakes, right, here's our four that is very, very commonly seen. And I believe I've made these mistakes when I first started out as well. So the first one will be going too fast. Right, I see this uh, with a lot of my students as well. They just rush through the whole letters and in the end, they are just um, having problems with the thick and thin stroke. So when it comes to calligraphy, it's very important to just take your time, just control the pressure and just slowly write each and every letter. Because if you're going too fast, you just end up with a very uh, wonky and monoline looking calligraphy and you definitely do not want that. Okay, right. The next one would be not lifting your pen. So many people would have the misconception that calligraphy must be done in one stroke, meaning all in one go. So that is definitely not true because uh, even though the letters might look like they are all connected, but they are not written um, all in one go. So when you're writing the strokes, right, you can just lift up in between and plan for the next stroke and then continue on with um the rest of the words okay so it's definitely uh it's definitely okay to take mini breaks mini breaks in between the strokes right and next we'll have the inconsistency in spacing so when you're writing phrases or words try to make sure that each letter has a um as has the same gap between each letter yeah so what you can do for this, right, you can have guided worksheets, which uh, we have in our website and just follow the um, guide. For example, um, you can have like uh, grids, paper with the square as grids and you can just follow and have make sure that each letter has the consistency uh, spacing, consistent spacing. Yeah. And lastly, would be using a frayed brush pad. So um, sometimes when you can't write the thick and thin strokes, it may not be because of your skills. It's sometimes due to the brush pen itself as well. So if you're buying a very, let's say a cheap brush pen or a very 
uh, poor quality brush pen, you tend to experience some uh, something called be having the frayed brush pen where the tip would just separate from each other and it creates tiny, tiny brush or strands which result in difficulty in con uh, writing the thin and this thick stroke. Yeah. So I actually bought a very poor quality pen from Daiso and it was very, um, it was cheap, yes, but the quality was just bad until I can't really uh, create a very thin, thin stroke when I draw the upstroke, right? So choosing the right pen is very important, but it doesn't have to be a very expensive pen. So we have included our recommended brush pens in uh, together with the workshop materials that you can check out. And some, some of them would include uh, Pentel, Pentel brush sign pen, the mount liners, Zebra's mount liner brush pen. So these two are my favorite brush pens that you can try and test out for your own. Okay, so yeah, these are just some common mistakes that everyone will definitely experience and it's definitely okay because we all make mistakes and that's how we learn. All right. So, okay, someone raised their hand, I think. Okay. Yes, do you have any? Yes, do you have any questions or anything that you yeah. want? Yeah. Uh, um about the um paper, does mm -hmm. it require a um a higher I don't know GSM for brush pen because I notice if I get a very um thin paper it's it's just like the paper is just drinking the ink and um the pen is you know the handwriting is just yes. block blocked so i'm just wondering if how um the minimum gsm mm. required to have a, a smooth because i believe it also destroys the brush right if you don't have any quality paper mm. Mm, right yes the paper quality is a is another factor as well. So if you're using a normal paper, like the A4 size paper, it's definitely too thin for uh, calligraphy. So you will tend to experience like bleeding or you can see that it starts to, yeah, the strokes will have a big blotch or it will bleed, right? So the GSM I would recommend would be, uh, perhaps 300 would be the optimum. 300, is, 300 GSM would be uh, the best. For example, for watercolor users, that would definitely be uh, the suitable thickness for the paper. Yeah. Another type of paper that I would recommend is definitely from Rodia. So they have very good quality papers that you can check out. So maybe I'll put the link uh, in a while that you guys can see. So Rodia produces, uh, they have papers specially made for calligraphy depending on whether you're using ink or using brush pens, it's uh, yeah suitable as well. So take note of the type of paper as well. And if you're using a normal paper, uh, if you ask how many GSM would I recommend, it would be 300, yeah, 300 GSM. Okay, thanks for asking that question because I think a lot of us have uh, experienced like bleeding from the normal A4 paper, okay? Yeah, thank you. Um, I've just noticed with the ro Rodia because I've just purchased that one yesterday. I think it's 70 GSM. So I'm not really sure if I purchased the right paper for but uh, um for the brush lettering, but I have it um uh, the dotted paper for the uh, I think it's 70 GSM. So what is the minimum GSM to have a at least quality um um right. output? Right. For Rodia, right, because uh, the one I have is um, below 300 GSM as well. And I think um, as long as it's from Rodia, I think it will be um, okay because I think the materials and ingredients of the paper is different as well. So no matter, I think if no matter how many GSM it is from Rodia, they, the ink wouldn't bleed. Yeah. So even though it's a very thin paper, the, the ink itself wouldn't bleed or see through when you flip behind the paper. So yeah, Rodia is great. That is, that is a great purchase. But if you're using for um, watercolor, 
300 GSM is uh, the optima. Mm. Okay, thank you. Right, you're welcome. May I ask you a question? Yeah, sure, sure. Go ahead. Um, is there a name for the font that you're teaching us? Um, the font, not really, but I would call this the modern calligraphy because traditional calligraphy tend to be more um, formal and strict when it comes to the spacing. So this would be uh, what we call brush lettering or modern calligraphy. Mm. I see. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. May I ask you? May I ask you? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry, could you just recommend some books uh, for and uh, beginners is and the uh, modern calligraphy and uh, books, please? Right for. Okay, I believe uh someone from the chat also asked a similar question, which is uh whether we have other worksheets or books, I guess, for calligraphy and the we do have um worksheets for this as well. We have beginner's guide to um, calligraphy where we cover all the letters from A to Z, the basic strokes and all connecting the letters and some other letters that are more difficult to connect. So we have all of them in one uh, downloadable uh, worksheet, workbook, yes. And I think Rebecca will show it later and we'll drop the link to the worksheet as well later on in the chat, okay? Huh. Yeah, I, I just want to know and uh, and the books and uh, we can buy on Amazon as well. So if you use already some books and I just want you to just recommend us. Thank you. Mm, I see. Yeah. Uh, for myself. Um, uh, all right, Rebecca, you want to say something? Yeah, for the book case, right, it's because of for us, majority of them are self-taught from like uh, various places. We do used to like attend workshops. That's where how we got, you know, master uh, our calligraphy skills. So in terms of books, right, there are actually a lot of them out there. And because um, there is a combination of both like traditional approach versus a uh, modern kind of approach of calligraphy. So not sure if you what kind of calligraphy books uh, it depends on modern. what kind of modern 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 calligraphy yes yeah if yeah. it's modern calligraphy i think you can refer to like the latest ones that's being released on amazon i can actually uh maybe you can just like drop us your email address and then we can drop you a few options to oh, okay send i will to... send it send my email yeah we will drop you the links so so again you can actually you know take a look directly at the page itself for reference all right yeah, just DM, uh, just PM us your email address and we will send it over. Hmm. Yep, yeah. So feel free to ask us uh, questions. Uh, we will be happy to answer them though. So uh, do you guys have other worksheets for all the letters? Okay, we do have a set of like comprehensive worksheets for uppercase and lowercase, as well as, um, you know, phrases, different sort of phrases, which is which I will be, you know, sharing, uh, sharing to it to you guys later. And then may we have the specs for your calligraphy pen? Yeah, but we, I believe you use like a couple of different pens. Maybe you want to share a bit like. Yeah, okay, so. What are the specs that you're currently using? Maybe I'll pin my screen so that everyone can see the specs. Okay, so for calligraphy pens, right, from Procreate, my favorite ones or my go-to ones would be the brush pen, um, streaks, or maybe script is great as well. Mm, these three. And the ones that I'm using is actually uh, custom made from myself based on my own um, liking. So, I forgot what type of um um I think what type of description or options that I change, but I can suggest that maybe you can play around with the settings and work with maybe depends on what you like, you can change the settings. So maybe if you want, I think I can share my brush pen to you guys in the future. Or maybe I'll just share it in email yeah 
Yeah, I believe this is more for like a digital uh, approach. So, so about like the physical ones that you have, and maybe you can share some. I, I believe that's the question. So oh, some okay, specs okay. of physical ones that you're currently using. Oh, specs from the physical ones. Okay, okay, great. So for the physical ones, it would be the Zebra Mountliner. This is one of the few that I like. Zebra Mountliner or the um, wait, Pentel Brush Sign Pen. So these two are very great. Okay, I hope you can see. Or if not, um, you can find it in the recommended tools. All right. So, okay, just take note that for these two pens, right, the Pentel brush sign pen is slightly stiffer for the tip. So if you're not used to stiffer tips, it's it might be a bit difficult because I received feedback from my students as well that they tried uh, the Pentel brush sign pen and it's a bit too difficult to uh, control i guess and for the zebra mount line mount liner they have a softer tip which is easier to use i guess mm. so it depends on you could you, mm. could you just try to write please i want to see oh, how okay. it works yes 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 thank you thank no you worries. okay so the first one which is the zebra mount liner this would be the thick stroke and the thin stroke and the combination would look something like this All right, now for the next one would be the Pentel brush sign pen, which is which has a uh, smaller and stiffer tip. So this is the thick stroke and this would be the thin stroke. So you can see that it's slightly thinner and this would be the combination. Okay. I hope this helps in choosing the pen that you want. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe I'll... Yes. All right, so these are the yes, different... Yes, that's very... Mm. Thank you. Right. For the zebra mark liner, right, do take note that they have two ends, which meaning that it's its dual tip. So the other side would be a mono line pen. Yeah, it will be a not flexible type of tip. Mm. It's just a normal marker type of pen. Mm. All right. Okay. Yeah, that would be the demonstration. Okay. What is the name of, uh, what is the name of the manufacturer of the pen that's blue with blue ink? Right, this one. The name be of the manufacturer. The zebra, zebra. Oh, I see zebra. Okay, thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay. All right. Um, I think we have another question from the floor. Um, any tips for being good at calligraphy quickly? <laughs> it's a very common question. Yeah, 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 true. Because, okay, the normally I would say practice because that is the only way to get better because I practice for, I think, around two years before I get very good at it. So practicing would be definitely one of the tips. And another one would be knowing your brush pen and controlling the pressure. Learn how to control each and every brush pen that you're using and control the pressure as well because you're basically creating the thick and thin strokes, which requires different pressure. So do, uh, yeah, take note on controlling the pressure and then it'll be easier for you to draw or write the letters. Mm. So someone raised their hand and you want to ask any questions? Mm. Yeah, um, with the brush pen, how do you really hold it? Because I've noticed hold it like 45 degrees for um, thicker strokes. Some would use 90 degrees both for the thin and thick strokes. So is it depends on the pen or um, it would be easier if it's like around um, maybe 45 or 90 degrees between that one. So which angle is the best? Are okay. commonly used for all of the brush brush pens. Thanks. Right. So if you if you see online, most of them will say, "Oh, forty five degrees is the ideal angle." But then again, it depends on yourself and how you position your hand and you the way you hold your uh, brush pen, right? So definitely, you wouldn't want it to be a ninety degree type of angle because ninety degree would basically look like this, and it's impossible to easy to create the thick and thin stroke easily. So definitely not 90 degrees. 
perhaps slightly slanted it doesn't have to be exactly 45 degrees right so as long as you're comfortable in creating the thick and thin stroke you can see where the brush pen is going that would be ideal mm. so try to experiment around try and test it out which angle or which type of position you would uh, find it easier because for for left handers as well right maybe they have questions like oh can left handers uh try calligraphy or write calligraphy the answer is yes the rule still applies just have it slightly slanted and draw the thick and thin stroke okay the yeah the best way is just to find out which position would uh, be the best for yourself and yeah as long as you're comfortable in holding the pen and you can see where the brush pen is going that would be just I, perfect mm. just slightly slanted will do definitely not 90 degrees yeah, 90 degrees uh, will make the position uh, seems very stiff. And then secondly, it's very uncomfortable. So as long as the position and the, you know, the adjustment of the pen on your hand is comfortable, I think that's the most important thing. All right. Yeah, I am a left-handed and have been doing calligraphy for about a year now. I It, it really doesn't make a difference. Yeah. Uh, Maybe okay. uh, someone also pointed out that the ink tend to smudge when you write the letters, right? So that I think that is the only problem or barrier, I guess. Mm. Otherwise, like what Sarah mentioned, it doesn't really make a difference. Mm. Yep. All right. Okay. I think uh, we are running out of time. I believe there are more questions to come. Of course, uh, we would like to answer them. If you have any questions, feel free to you know, follow us on our Instagram and you can actually DM us your questions and we will follow up from there. All right. So because this session is only one hour to be exact, um, the whole demonstration only takes about like 30 to 40 minutes. And usually uh, that amount of time will not help you to master everything you need to know. So, which is why we also have this a beginner or slash intermediate modern calligraphy class, okay, which is a one three hour session that covers everything that you need to know about modern calligraphy as a beginner or an intermediate learner. Okay, so for this class, it will be our very last uh, live class, okay, and we only keep it to 10 packs per class for a more personal and engaging ex learning experience. So uh, the only available date left for this is only on 17th of October, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, time zone will be GMT plus 8, okay, because we are based in Asia. So if, if you are in uh, overseas or outside of Southeast Asia, you might want to check uh, the time zone on your end. Okay, so what will be covered during this session? Um, Advanced fundamental strokes, definitely A to Z lower plus upper cap, uh, uppercase letters, combining of difficult letters, take on practice worksheets, uh, about 30 plus pages, one-on-one uh, -on -one feedback on worksheets by us. And then this whole package uh, on usual rate is about $49.99, which is round out about 50 plus US dollar. And then as a show of appreciation, okay, we are only offering uh, $24 or round up is about 25 US dollars for you guys today. And it's only for today. So after today, we will revert back to the normal pricing. Okay, and take note, this will be our very last workshop because we find that, uh, because we are currently working on uh, coming up with a course. Okay, so if you wish to, you know, stay updated with our upcoming calligraphy course, you can actually, uh, you know, leave us your email address if you haven't like uh, signed up or registered on Eventbrite, we'll keep you posted and all the updates that we are going to have in the future. Okay, of course, for those that uh, just want to have like calligraphy worksheets and not attend the workshop at all, you can actually check them out over at our site. Okay, where uh, Poe have just like shared the list of links in the chat box. Okay, so there are different types of worksheets over here. You can see um, yeah, monoline, modern, and quirky. Of course, there are many more to come, but as of now, we have uh, this few on our website. Feel free to browse them if you're interested. And then this is how it looks like uh, inside um, uh, numerous pages of printable worksheets for you to practice on. Or this also can be exported and brought it over to your Procreate um, app. Okay, well, to, to use it, uh, to even practice it. Okay, so 
without further ado, let me wrap it up. Um, if you wish to see more of this, please follow us on Instagram. Okay, uh, Puyi will be sharing the link in the chat box, or you can just simply scan the QR code over here to follow us for more updates. Because other than calligraphy, uh, we also do other illustrations, beautiful art illustrations for our clients, projects, or even organizations. Or sometimes we even hold private workshops for certain organizations for their employees. So if you're interested in that, we can actually uh, personalize the whole entire workshop just for you and your employees uh, for a more fun and engaging bonding session all right so yeah do reach out to us if you have any questions i believe uh, some of you might have uh, can actually you can actually search us on instagram weekly print w-i-g-g-l-y-p-r-i-n-t and then just dm us your questions and we will reply as soon reply you as soon as possible yeah. All right. Watching you do the short live really helps on. Thank you so much, Helen. And we hope to see you again in our future events. Yeah. We'll keep you guys posted um, on our future events. So maybe you can follow us on Instagram. We are more active on there. And or you can alternately, you can join our newsletter. We will be posting uh, any future events uh, and send them through your email as well. Hmm. All right, so if that's all, that's all from us today. Do you have any, uh, you know, any else, any anything to say to your audience for you? I think that's all from my end. <laughs> uh, I think that will be, thank you all for attending this workshop. And maybe we'll have a group photo right now. So that will be, it will be best if you can turn on your cameras and we can see your beautiful faces so that we can all just take a very quick group photo, right? So you can just post whatever you want. You can do a peace sign. You can hold up your uh, progress on your worksheet or whatever. And then we will take a group photo, okay? Right, no worries, no worries. Okay, so anyone else want to turn on their cameras? They'll be taking the photo in a few seconds. Okay, right. Okay, so final call. Anyone want to turn on their cameras? If no, I'll take the picture soon or right now. Okay, all right. Thank you. Okay, we'll be taking the picture in one, two, three. Okay. Great. Right. So thank you all. All right. Thank oh. you so much for attending, guys. I know it's a Saturday. And if you have any feedback regarding this session, right, feel free to let us know or you can just privately DM us if you want to stay anonymous and it will only show it to us. Okay. And we really appreciate your time for today. And we hope to see you in our future sessions and hope there are more to come other than calligraphy class alone because we do try to explore more uh, creative artwork or creative kind of um, hobbies and stuff like that to engage more people like you who are interested in such uh, activity. All right, so yeah, have a good weekend ahead guys. And I hope you guys enjoy uh, this session as much as we do over here. All right, thank you so much and have a good weekend guys. Thank bye. You. bye. bye.